this is part three of the Revell A10 Warthog model. The 148th scale, get ready for 20 minutes of pure unadulterated painting fun. As you can see, what I am doing here is putting a primer coat on this model. I've got some little paper pieces inside of the engines. That way I don't get any spray inside of those. I figured that was the easiest way to mask them off. So this is what I did. Uh, the first thing we're doing here, we're going to put on our primer coat. We can see whatever defects we have that we may need to sand down and give a little extra attention to. You know, that's always important when you're doing your model. You want to make sure that you pay attention to that. And remember, I do my models my way. You do your models your way. It doesn't matter how good I am at my models and how good you are at your models. Just do it because you have fun doing it. So here we are. We're putting the primer coat on. This is the right wing. Getting the front of the fuselage over here and our little cannon gun. We are going over to the left wing right here, the back of our engines. So this model, I enjoyed doing it as I do all my models. There were some little things that I didn't like, like how the engine went together. It was kind of hard to do and made it hard to paint the way I did this. You see, I have those wheels on there. Maybe I should have done that a little differently in hindsight, but this is how I did it at the time. Next time might be a little bit different. So we're just going over this, putting the primer on the underside of this plane here. Make sure you get all your pylons, make them look pretty. When we do go to paint this model, we are going to use three colors on this. One, I used a pale green, which turned out to be a little too pale, but overall, I'm satisfied with the model. It looks nice. The other is a medium green and a dark green. So you just get those three colors and we'll put those on and we'll make this thing look pretty. Now, you see, I bought a bunch of putty here. I put it all over this model. I got them at Toys R Us, which now no longer exists. So thank God I was able to get those, the putty, while I could get it. So we're putting on the pale green. I did mess up and put it in some spots that I shouldn't have. That's because the construction's got a little confusing. I think looking back at how I did this, the best thing I should have done was just paint the entire model that pale green color instead of putting all the camo lines on it, then go back and do that later. That way I just have a base coat of the green. It probably would have saved me a lot of time in laying out all those demarcation lines for the actual camo itself. We're getting each side of the fuselage here. You see where I looks like I messed up a little bit. Here we're getting that thing. I don't know what it is. It's where the wheel goes into. You could say it's a wheel well and probably like fuel tanks too or something like that. So we're just painting along the left wing here. Always remember to watch out for that pedo tube, not to break it off even when you're turning your model on your little turntable. It, it's a doozy if you hit it. So we've got that little flap there, the deceleron that we were working on. This is the edge of the wing, of course, and you can even paint the uh, little tail light there if you want to. Here's the back of the engine, just going over this. As I said, probably just be best to paint the whole model that base color of the light green just to get it out of the way and I said I did use a pale green so you may want to find something that is a little bit different to use than pale green because you see it does look kind of pale and at the end it might look a little weird to you it does still look a little weird to me but it came out pretty good so here we go let's turn it over we're going to get the underside of this plane Look how pretty it looks. I'm so happy about it. As I said, getting inside of these engines in that area is a little hard to do because of the way it's designed. So you may want to pre-paint that, uh, then find a way to glue it down, and then find another way to get rid of all your lines where everything meets up, all your joints and your cracks. That was the biggest issue with that. So here we are painting the bottom of this plane, going over the wings. As I said, what a joy to do for this aircraft. By the way, apologize for being late on this video. Some things were out of my control that prevented me from getting this to you on time at 10 a.m. on Saturday. So you might have to do with a little bit of a later date today. So here we go, going around the wheel wells. As I said, I put those on. We're going to paint those white later on, just not during this video. So check back for a different episode for that. And by the way, if you haven't seen all the other additional episodes, make sure you click these links over here. That way you can subscribe. That way you get our latest videos on time on Saturdays. Let's hope we can stick to that. And as well, you know, you can just watch whatever you want. So click those links and subscribe to get the latest updates. 
Here we are painting the rest of this light green color here. We're almost done with it. I'm only doing a first coat here. These are the little things that go on the tips of the wings that are, actually I shouldn't say the tips of the wings, I should say by the fuselage and the wings. So I'm painting each one of those. We're gonna get those colored. I see I masked those off a little bit and I probably even painted those the wrong color too and have to go back and do those later. Anything's possible with me because you know those directions, the way it had the colors, it got a little confusing and it's looking at one shade of gray versus another shade of gray basically on the instructions. So it made it kind of confusing when you're looking at that. We'll also cover that in the review later on. So here you go, getting the tail fins, going over those, get one side, get down here in the bottom of it, going over here, getting another coat on the engine. As I said, I put a couple of coats on this model of each color. And then when I went through with it, I wound up peeling off all the tack and I feathered everything in and made the ends look nice and pretty and shiny and that was the whole goal of this to make it look pretty and kind of look like camo even though some camo might look really sharp I made this look kind of fuzzy and it looked really good in the end result like I said just keep going around this here like you see getting all of this second coats are always the best and then even sometimes a third coat you never know it just have to see how it turns out but I kept doing more and more coats and it also would bring out that color. This is the thing that goes on side the wheels. Each one had a different color to it, so you wanna pay attention to that, make sure you get it right. This one is pale green. Here we go, getting that one all finished up. I don't remember if I showed you the other one. I may not have. So this color right here, by the way, I forgot actually, uh, this is a dark gray, so maybe you know I told you that we did a, a light green, a medium green, and a dark green kind of incorrect. It's a light green, a medium green, and a dark gray. So this is the dark gray that we have going on here. Put that all over this model on the tails and anything you see left over essentially. That is what's going to go the wonderful dark or medium green color. I can't even remember anymore I did this model so so long ago. So here we go going over the gun. And like I said, I just do light coats of this. The inside of that little door there, that's going to get painted white, but I painted everything at this time, just the dark gray. You see, just going along these edges here, and once we peel off the, the uh, tack, you, you'll see like little spots of white that we get touched up later on. Going inside of the engines, I really wasn't too concerned with mist getting anywhere, because I just figured, you know, we'll just call that weathering if it does get somewhere. And you see, I have little spray lines on there. No big deal, it's camouflage. It will go away when you just put on your second coats and it'll give it a little bit of depth to this model. Going around the back of that tail fin, quite a little bit of a challenge. You know, sometimes the angles of this, a little hard to film and get everything right, but you know, all in all, I think I did a fairly good job. This whole side here is going to go a little bit of gray and then we'll come back and if there's any more colors, we'll put that on there. And like I said, it is hard to remember what colors go where since there's a lot of it. And even some of the greens that you see on the wings, I actually paint over those because they weren't the right color. And you see me doing that there. I just put on some dark gray there. This is the back of that tail stabilizer inside of the deceleron. We're going to get those and also that little uh, small piece that's on the side there. Probably like a little... I don't know what you would want to call it, an actuator. Here we are, just doing the underside. Make sure you get all the necessary detail, as I did. Just pay attention to the instructions. That's the best thing I could tell you, because it, there was so many different patterns on this that I got so confused because the colors all blended in together, and you think you're doing it right, and then you look back at it, and you're like, wait a second, I think I did it wrong. So, like I said, if it's just easier to paint the whole model green, and you don't have to worry about putting any demarcation lines on it, then you could just go back and paint in the darker colors later. So always remember, do light colors first and dark colors after that. And it'll also make all these other additional colors pop because it's got a little base coat to it. So here we are, we're getting the engines. These are the front of them, and we are getting the underside and those little antennas that are under there. Just lightly get inside of those cracks here. Like I said, it was a little hard to do, so however you do your model, I wish you luck. We always like the positive comments on here. Sometimes we get negative comments, and that's okay because haters are going to hate, aren't they? So we're getting the end of this wing. Here we go, getting the opposite side of it. Always remember to get your missile pylons. We did stack this thing with some missiles. Not as many as I would have liked to because those missiles are on the Thunderbird that I talk about so much. If you haven't seen that video, 
click these links right here and they will take you to the Thunderbird video. Just go over this like this. This is the bottom and there's the gun which I painted that whole thing and then later on I went back and I took a small little detailed drill and drilled out the little holes and made it look more realistic which is one thing I just never do. But on this model for some reason I did it. So guess what? We are now halfway done. Congratulations, you've made it this far, as boring as this video is of me watching me paint, which I agree can get a little uninteresting, but hey, you know, you want to see how it's done? This is how I did it, and you can kind of learn from it and do it your own way. Here we are getting the front of this again, getting that little door. Here's some sections that are unpainted with the gray. We're going to go over this. Uh, stick around later on in this. We're going to paint some of the missile pylons and the... Um, missile rails as well in addition to the canopy glass we'll paint those and we'll take off the masking that i have on it they go one color i believe here we go you see it's really starting to darken up the more coats you put on this and it really looks pretty just keep giving it more and more coats that way you know when you're done with this it'll look like a really good model i put a small gloss coat on it as well that way for the decals there were a ton of decals always put on the main decals first then do the general markings if it has it because sometimes they just don't do it right and it like looks funny so here we go here is that other green color i am talking about just slowly put it on in the spaces you need it you can always go back later darken it up you see i'm doing this freehand because i want the uh, lines to look really fuzzy and just kind of blend in some people say that's how camouflage is supposed to be you know, I think sometimes just because it's on a big plane, that's just kind of how it looks because they're not really too concerned with masking it off. Smaller scales, it's a little bit harder to duplicate. Here you are getting the inside of that tail fin, and you see how, like, the paint looks kind of see-through, but the more coat you put on there, the better it's going to get. Getting the edge of that, you can see the plane is really starting to come to life now. So, you know, just go along the inside of the Deceleron here, and that's that dark color. Here's the edge of the wing. I had the paint a little wet, ran a little bit in some spots, but you know, that's okay because sometimes that runniness just gives it its own little signature and that's what we want with our models. We want them to be our own and be creative with them. It's okay if they don't look perfect. We're not out here to try and win gold and silver medals in any competitions like that. At least I'm not. I'm just here for a hobby and I'm just here to show you how I make a model. So. We really think when you watch our videos and give us all those positive comments, because you know there are haters out there that love to judge everything and say, oh, well, we could do better than this. So anyway, thank you for watching my videos. I appreciate it and all the positivity that does come my way, even if I'm not the most perfect model builder in the world. You're doing good so far. We've got about seven minutes left of this video. Thank you for sticking with me through this whole thing. We're getting this engine right here. And we're going to start putting on our second coat and flip this over and do the bottom. I tried to basically do a top and a bottom because you can only have so much putty for demarcation lines. And I did want to at least put the putty down. That way I could didn't have to freehand the line and look at a piece of paper to figure out how it goes. Some of them I did. Here, believe it or not, that small little patch on the plane actually does stay like that. It did look a little strange, but that's just how it is. We are getting the rest of this done going onto this side over here onto the tail fin getting this side as you see sometimes you just miss stuff and you have to go back just get careful with it i was like i said i wasn't worried about overspray and i don't think you should be either the plane turned out really good getting the underside of this here we go some more spots got to get the rest of the back side of that tail i think later on you can see i have a line already going across there just slowly filling this in take your time do it right make it look pretty it would be nice when i get this model done because he's got a friend waiting for him a happy little friend in the a10 warthog that's all gray at the same revel kit so here we go don't forget to get the pylon get the deceleron over there go all throughout the whole flap get all your pylons make them look pretty whatever colors they're supposed to be this is one of the few planes where I actually put them on first because I felt it was easier to do that since it was all camouflage and painting camo sometimes just is not fun because you know it's just a lot of detail in there. You want to make sure you do it right and 
Sometimes you just get sick and tired of painting the same model 15 times because that's essentially what you're doing. You're putting on one coat, then another coat. If you're putting on demarcation lines like I am, you know, you have to go back and then feather those out later. At least that's how I did it because I felt that was the easiest way to do this. Hey, guess what? Five and a half minutes left to go. See me going around those landing gears right there, which I'm going to paint white a little bit later on. I found this was the best way to do that. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's another way. And if you have another way, I'd love to hear the comment on that and what the best way to do that is. Um, one of these engines should have like a little mark for engine wear on there and exhaust. I never put one on, nor do I care to. I wasn't too worried about it. Here we are getting on the bottom side of this. Does it look difficult to reach? Yes, because it is. Maybe it's because I'm trying to make a video for you guys, so I have to do everything by myself. I don't have anyone holding a camera for me. So, you know, I'm just kind of showing you how I do it with the best of my ability, with just me and a camera. So, I hope you like that. Here we are putting a little bit of green on the side here. We're also going to put our decals here. It's got a uh, little favorite bunny on the side that some guys might like. We're going to go around the top of this front nose here pretty soon and bring it around to the other side and get this whole front covered with that same nice color. Four minutes to go. You like my little countdown? Are you enjoying this video? If you are, give me a thumbs up and tell me how much you like it because we do want to hear from you, believe it or not. Here we are, just like as I promised, going around this other side to get that green color. Take it slow, nice and easy. Going around right here. Get it good, make it look pretty. Putting on a second coat. This will feather out real nicely by the time this plane is done. Once we take off all this uh, putty that I have, you'll be able to see all the lines and the little errors that will need to get touched up. And there's nothing wrong with doing touch up. That's why this is a hobby and that's what makes it fun. Still learning with the airbrush. You know, I'm getting better at it. And that's all we can do is get better with the airbrush as time goes on get in the front of those engines I actually did very good with not getting any paint inside of those and even if I did it's not too hard to break out your other color and just repaint them so here we go there's a second coat on the front of this probably going to do a third coat eventually who knows you know make it look pretty it is an airplane here we go putting a little feather marks I probably get some runs on there no big deal easy to hide them hey look at this it's landing gear each one goes dark green and a pale green. At least I think it's dark green. Hopefully it is. Maybe it's medium green. I don't remember. Here is the front canopy. We're going to get that. Both sides put a couple coats of that. Here is the rear canopy. I always like to put my canopies on last. Even though the paint was painted, I had to glue that down. So I glued it and used super glue for it to kind of fill it in. And did a little bit of sanding around it to try my best to make it look seamless didn't do the best of jobs because well it's me and I get impatient as you know so here we are just giving those a nice final coat on the inside of this green color gonna make it look pretty and here we go missile rails these I believe hold the uh, Maverick missiles there were six of those they have little glass pieces on those are really made of plastic so don't get too excited about the glass those went together nicely. Uh, some of the decals I did have trouble with on the uh, bombs that went olive green, but that's a whole nother movie. And we're on this movie right now. Getting close to the end here. Got two minutes left to go. Thank you for sticking around as long as you have. We really enjoy it. Look at that, clogged up a little bit. So we're just gonna paint these, make sure they're painted good. You know, you may want to uh, secure them with something else. As I said, I painted these here. We're putting the dark green color on it because you can see the light green color. This is the best way I wanted to do it. That way, in the event somebody wanted to get picky and see, look inside, they could say, oh, well, they did get inside of this a little bit. Here's the top side of each one. Make sure you get the sides, front, top, bottom, whatever you want to do. You know how that is. And now it's time to peel off our demarcation lines. So here we go, peeling off our putty. You can see where we're going to have to do some touch up. And I believe I did most of the touch-up using the darker green paint, not the pale color. Some places I had to use pale because you could see where it left some stuff. Only a couple bit more here on the top side. We'll flip our plane over because we got to get the bottom. Yeah, so here we go, getting the bottom. 
And guess what? We've only got 45 seconds left of this video and you will be done. We thank you for watching. Peel out these things. This is what it looks like so far. We're going to get our tape off, peeling it off ever so carefully, making sure we don't tear our paint off using my little tweezers. Still got one piece to go. There it is. The other side, pick that off. And there is our front canopy. It is done. Here we go, getting the main canopy. I would like to thank you guys for watching this video. Remember, for the latest updates, to see the latest videos, subscribe, that way you can watch them. We try to get you a video every other Saturday. So here you go. Thanks for watching and have a good day. Later.